And uh, we're just looking forward to a great time of the Lord today. I'm just so thankful for His uh, great power, His strength, salvation, forgiveness, grace, mercy. I'm thankful for those things today. And uh, just looking forward to what the Lord has for us today. And uh, we just believe it and trust it that God's going to uh, just bring us greater things as we leave this place today. I pray that we leave saying, you know what, I've never seen it like that before. All right, half of you's with me. The other half, you'll come along in a minute. Praise the Lord. Man, thank y'all for being here. Let's get started with our announcements, and then we'll uh, go right into the worship portion of the service. Uh, I, just following the uh, uh, worship portion of, in here, our kids will be having their morning worship with uh, Rachel. She's doing our kids' worship today. And uh, so uh, all our kids from 3 to 11, you're invited to come back to our uh, uh, kids' portion of the worship service this morning. Also tonight, our youth ministry will be going to the mission in Gastonia, meeting here at the church at 515. So young people, make sure that you are a part of that. And then our service tonight here at the church at 6. Prayer meeting tomorrow night here at the church at 6 o'clock also. I encourage you to come out for a time of prayer. Believe for the Lord to move in a mighty way. Wednesday night, we started this past Wednesday night on the book of Revelation. Uh, went through some uh, introductory material uh, this past Wednesday night, if you missed it, I encourage you to go back and listen to it and get caught up and come on in with us on Wednesday night in the adult class as we're going through the book of Revelation and uh, looking forward to that. Uh, also on Wednesday night, we have our other classes for our kids, our youth, and our young adults, and uh, we encourage you to be a part of uh, those classes. Sign language class starts today at 4, uh, so come on in and learn uh, how to communicate in a different different fashion. So. Uh, Make sure that you've done that. Also, I want to remind you about the sign language class. If you did sign up, they are asking you to bring a couple dollars to the class today to kind of offset the materials. Uh, there's no charge for the class. It's just for the materials that you'll be getting. So please make sure that you uh, do that today at 4 o'clock. Uh, also, uh, this coming Thursday night, we're having a class on the oils of the Bible. Uh, these uh, essential oils and stuff are becoming a pretty hot commodity right now. And... Uh, just want to let you know, first of all, that this is not a sales pitch. This is just information and uh, as it pertains to oils within the scriptures, uh, different things of that nature. It's just a class on that. So we encourage you to uh, uh, come to that if you're interested in that. And if you have any questions, you can see Tracy and she can tell you more about that. Uh, also, our seniors will be having their Thanksgiving meal on the 18th of uh, November this coming Saturday. Uh, hard to believe we're right here at the end of the year and it's Thanksgiving and on the top of us. Man, it's, it's absolutely amazing how quick this year has gone by. Uh, but God's been good to us this year, so we thank the Lord for that. But uh, as we go into this season of Thanksgiving, uh, you know, we shouldn't wait for one day a year, but every day give thanks because God's been good to us. And so our seniors are going to be getting together, having a meal this coming Saturday. Please make sure that you sign up at the welcome desk to make sure all the foods and things like that are taken care of. If you got any questions, see Brother Jim or Sue, and they'll be able to tell you more about that. Christian Ministry Food Collection, we're still collecting dry beans, bag dry beans. There's a cooler out there in the in the uh, lobby. Uh, we're we're uh, making sure that we put it in a cooler so we can close the lid when we leave because we don't want no friends getting into our dry beans. Y'all know what I mean. Every now and then we get some friends in here. But right now he's on a chocolate binge, so we're going to see if we can help him with a chocolate. He's found Janet's chocolate, her stash back there. So anyway, uh, we, we're going to see if we can take care of him. But anyway, so we're collecting... It's a November food drive, but we're going to collect through uh, the 20th of December. Uh, so if you can help with that when you're out doing your grocery shopping, grab a couple bags of dry beans and bring them in, put them in the cooler, and uh, we're going to try to bless Christian ministries with that. There's also a tote right beside that cooler as we're collecting shoes, gently used or new shoes for uh, uh, any sizes. But uh, we want to bless some folks in the Charlotte area, uh, those that, that may not have shoes through, through the winter, and make sure that they've got some shoes and stuff like that. So... If you've got something in the back of your closet that you're not using any longer and they're in decent shape, or if you'd like to go and, and buy some new ones, that would be awesome too. Uh, just throw them in that, that tote out there and we'll get it to the ones that uh, we'll get it to, to the ones that need that. Uh, also, the soup kitchen, the first Sunday of every month, we uh, serve at the soup kitchen here in, in Lincoln at the Christian Ministries. And uh, uh, Danette and Tim head that up. So if you have any, uh, if you'd like to help serve with this, uh, it's always a blessing to do this. They share a devotional time with them. They, uh, uh, you know, uh, feed them food and, and take care of them that way. It's just a, it's just a great blessing to help those that are a little less fortunate here in our, uh, in our community. Uh, we'd encourage you to sign up for that. They usually need about eight people. I think it's about somewhere around eight people to help with that. 
So uh, Danette and Tim always help with that. But if that's something that you're interested in, there's a sign-up sheet at the Welcome Desk. If you got any more questions about what's done or those kinds of things, see Danette, and uh, she'll be able to tell you more about that. All right, there's the nursery ministry schedule. Good to see you all this morning. Thank you all so much for being here. I see some familiar faces, see some new faces. Uh, so good to have you all with us. Appreciate our visitors being with us today. Thank you all so much for being in the Lord's house today. I want to go to the Lord in prayer. We've got several needs and requests that we want to continue to remember and pray for. And We're just believing for the Lord to move and heal and deliver. And uh, we want to continue to pray for them. Pray, pray for Preston. Uh, his, he's better? All right. Preston's better. We can take Preston off. Praise God. Thank the Lord for that. Uh, I don't know if Jerry will be here this morning or not, but uh, he had his uh, t- uh, 19th, 20th, and 21st stint put in this week. And uh, they, they uh, had to shoot some dye through, and they told him that his kidney function was acting a little strange when they did this. They were He was borderline, but they went ahead and did it because of the pain that he'd been having in his chest. But now he's having some pain uh, with his kidney. So I uh, want to pray for him as he's recovering from this. Uh, that God would just touch him and minister to him. And uh, we know that God's able to do a complete work in his life. Thank the Lord. Listen, folks, it's just a, he's just a walking miracle. Uh, you know, 21 stents, bypass surgery, all the stuff he's been through with, and he's still out there running heavy equipment. <laughs> God's good. It's, he's 72. He'll be 72. Uh, second to second birthday, he's still running heavy equipment, got all those stents in his heart, bypass I mean, God's good. And uh, so continue to pray for him. I know that God's going to take care of Jerry and just continue to minister to him, that God would just continue to minister to him. Remember Gail Mace, who's dealing with depression. Uh, continue to remember Sue's brother, Fred, uh, for total healing for him. I want to continue to pray for, him, for them. Also, continue to remember uh, Debbie. Uh, they determined that she has sleep apnea. And uh, they, they're saying that uh, if they get this fixed for her, they could really help the situation with her legs uh, that she's been uh, fighting with and get some of the the oxygen flowing back through her body and stuff. So uh, remember, Debbie, as she's going through this situation, that God would touch her and minister to her. Continue to remember the Cowart family. Uh, it's a grandmother and a son uh, that's uh, uh, having some health issues, most of all needing salvation. Continue to remember Darren, uh, that God would touch him and minister to him. Continue to remember Paula's parents, uh, both needing complete healing. We continue to pray for them, uh, that God would touch them and minister to them. Continue to pray for Sarah, uh, that God would just touch her and strengthen her and help her as she's going through some uh, things that she's dealing with. Uh, Ed's brother, Stevie, uh, is back in rehabilitation, am I right? Uh, so continue to remember him, that God would touch him and minister to him. Shane's with her this morning, but we're still praying for him. And uh, the eardrum issue, is it getting any better? Or are you still waiting to see what happens? Still ringing like crazy. I, I, he was here last Sunday, and then while I was preaching, I saw him stick one finger in the ear, so kind of tuned me out just a little bit. But... Uh, Appreciate you being here, buddy. We're praying God to heal you and that God do a work in your life. So we're praying for God to do that. Continue to remember Mary Carr. Uh, she had a double mastectomy about a month and a half ago, I guess, and uh, she's dealing with some pain from that. So play, pray for her, if you will. And also Francis Vestal, uh, who has uh, colon cancer surgery scheduled for the 20th of November. Uh, also remember uh, Barbara's grandson, Casey. She had asked us to request, uh, continue to pray for him, uh, pray for healing in his left eye, uh, that God would touch him and minister to him. Continue to remember Michelle Bentley, who's dealing with an infected toe. And then uh, Kim Jackson, this is my aunt, uh, got a call uh, on Friday. They had to take her. She's in the trauma unit in Florence, and uh, she's uh, developed a bleeding on the brain. She's been having some migraines and doing some stuff. And so she's in uh, uh, critical uh, in critical care there in uh, Florence. So remember my Aunt Kim, if you will. I think God would touch her and minister to her. Also remember Tony Cruz. This is uh, Sister Maria's uh, uh stepdad uh, who's down in Florida she's down there with him uh, he's got a fractured leg and ankles and also dealing with kidney failure so if you will please remember uh, Tony Cruz that God would touch him and minister him I know this is a lot of needs that we're putting out there but the uh, reason we put them out there is because the scripture said make your request known unto the Lord and uh, that's why we, why, why we put a name and a situation to him and call him out knowing that God's able to heal and God's able to deliver so uh, we want to pray for the Lord to move and minister I also want to pray for my little sister from the nursing home. She fell this morning uh, coming out and uh, uh, hit her knee on the concrete. And we're, we're praying. I, I told her she probably busted the concrete when she fell, but but uh, she's, she's hard-headed. She said, I hit my knee. I said, oh, man, that, that concrete's all messed up now. But <laughs> but uh, anyway, I was just cutting up with her a little bit. But we want to pray for her. 
I'll let God will touch her and thank the Lord for these that have been coming from the from the uh, the living center there, and that God will just continue to strengthen them and help them. And we praise God for uh, Sheila and, and uh, uh, Stephanie going and bringing them with us and letting them continue to worship with us. Thank God for what they're doing. Amen. Amen. Thank you all again for being here today. We're looking forward to a great time in the Lord. We're just believing and trusting God. God's will is going to be done. Continue to remember our nation. Continue to remember those that are suffering and going through the stuff that they're going through. I, I know that it's not in the news right now, but we want to continue to remember those families in Sutherland, Texas that are dealing with that tragedy of, of that uh, mass killing that took place in the First Baptist Church there. We want to continue to remember those families. Pray, continue to pray for them. Continue to remember the families of those in New York uh, from the attack with the Home Depot truck that took place a couple of weeks ago. They killed, I, I think it was eight people that were killed there. Um, we're just, just seeing a lot of evil in the world. But I, I, I still believe that good triumphs evil. And I still believe that God's people can rise up and the church can be a light in this dark world. And we just believe for God to move and minister in a mighty way. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. The angel of the Lord and kept it around about them that fear him. He's a protector. Amen. Amen. I love you so much. Thank you all for being in the Lord's house today. Let's stand. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, you may not be able to recall all these needs, but that's why we list them and that's why we name them. Uh, this is a process of making our requests known to God. And uh, so when we do these prayer requests, we're just going to believe and trust for the Lord's will to be done. I know you have many needs that you've been praying for and believing for. And uh, we're going to agree together and just believe for God's will to be done. Uh, no special moves needed, but just someone right next to you. Would you join with them as a point of agreement? And uh, we're just going to believe for the Lord's will to be done and God just do a mighty thing in our lives. And we're just believing for God to move in this service today. So let's pray together. Father, we love you. Thank you so much again for the opportunity that you've given us to come into your house. God, we praise your holy name. You're so good to us. We can never thank you enough for the great things that you've done. We bless your holy name, Jesus. You're a healer a deliverer, a way maker, God. We bless your name, Jesus. I ask you, Lord God, to move in every need and request, God, that you would bring healing and deliverance, God, and salvation, Lord, in every need and every request for the things that are represented across this room, for every life, God, I pray that you would move in their needs, God, that you would meet their need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Father, I ask you right now, God, that you would intervene in this service, God, that you would have your way. Speak through every word that's spoken. Speak through every song that's sung, God. Every lyric that's sung, every note that's played. God, every class that's taught today, every, every session, God, that we go through. God, I pray, Lord, that your will be done. For those that are watching by media, for those in the Hispanic group, for those in the nursery. God, for those that are being ministered to in our kids' class today. God, I pray that your will be done and accomplished in this house today. Save the lost. Fill the Holy Ghost. Sanctify the unclean, God. Heal those that are brokenhearted. You said that you are near those that have a broken spirit and have a contrite heart. God, let them feel your presence near today and know that victory is theirs. God, that you have caused us to become more than conquerors through Christ that loved us. God, I thank you for that today. I thank you that you always cause us to triumph in Jesus Christ. I thank you today, God, that, that you have caused us to have victory in you. God, that we are victorious because of what you've done and the great things that you're doing, God. You've been so good to us. God, I thank you for protecting. Thank you for protecting Brother Roger, God, and keeping him, Lord. I thank you for protecting all of us. If the devil had his way, that drunk driver would have hit us. If the devil had his way, we'd have run off into the ditch. God, if the devil had his way, we'd have hit the tree. If the devil had his way, we'd have died of the heart attack. If the devil had his way, God, we'd all not be. But because of your grace and your mercy, God, we're here today in your house assembled together to be able to worship your holy name and to praise you and to glorify you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for your great mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your great grace, God, that you bestowed upon our lives. Thank you, Lord, that greater is he that is in us 
than he that's in this world. God, I bless your holy name today. You are worthy of all the praise, worthy of all the glory, worthy of all the honor, and we magnify your holy name. And for all that's done and all that will be accomplished in this house today, we praise you and give you glory and honor. We ask it in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Come on. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Would you take a moment and hug a neck, shake a hand. Somebody might not have been hugged all week long. Might be the only hug they got. Come on, give them a hug. Welcome unto the house of the Lord.
Aren't you thankful that God is our champion, that he fights for us? Praise the Lord. You can be seated for just a moment. We'll ask uh, Amanda and Emery to come and family and friends that are going to stay in behalf of, with her. For the last almost a month now, we've been trying to dedicate this baby. Every time we go to have it, something happens, the baby gets sick fighting through it, but uh, thank the Lord that uh, he's hired her to be able to be with us today. Tell him, hey, Emmer, how y'all doing? <laughs> this is a, this is an occasion that's not to be taken lightly, it's very serious. You know, I imagine when my mom and dad dedicated me to the Lord, they never thought that one day I'd drive out the driveway, and go off to Bible school and take up ministry and begin to do the work and the call of God. Uh, but it's a serious thing because you're rendering that child as a gift back unto God because you realize that it's a, that baby is a gift from God. Uh, if you have children... The Bible teaches us that we train them up in the way that they should go. When they're old, they shall not depart from it. And uh, I'm thankful that Emory is able to be a part of our family, our church family. And uh, just the light that she is and the difference that she makes. Thankful for the family, friends that are here, that are part of uh, what God's doing in, in her life. And we're just believing and anticipating that God's going to do greater things in her life and that God's going to continue to minister to her and strengthen her as she grows up. We as a church family are going to be here for her. I, I like what Amanda said to me before. She said, you know, uh, you guys are family to me. And uh, that's, that's, what, that's what we strive to be is family. Now the, now, the unique thing about family is family sometimes doesn't get along. Amen. I don't always get along with my sisters and my brother, you know. Well, my sisters, my brother, my bro me and my brother, we get along pretty good. Me and my sisters, you know, sometimes we fight and argue and fuss, carry on. My dad called me at 7.30 this morning and said, you're on speaker. I said, okay. He said, who's more hard-headed, your mom or me? I said, I ain't getting in this fight. Man, y'all done lost your mind waking me up to ask me that kind of question. What's wrong with you? That's the first question I get in the morning. Won't know who's more hard-headed, my mom or my dad. Families have issues sometimes, but at the end of the day, we're still family. I'll tell you something about my family. I can fight with my sister, but don't you mess with her. Come on now. Amen. Sometimes, sometimes we, we, we have issues and, and we deal with stuff, but, you know, the best, the best thing is is we get through it because we're family. And this is family. This is all part of family, and this is what we've come to do is to say, hey, we stand with you as family, and we're going we're gonna to help you in the good times, and we're going to walk with you through the rough times, the valleys. We're going we're gonna to pray with you in the valleys. We're going to shout with you on the mountains. That's what family is all about. I don't know why I'm going through all this. Maybe somebody just needed to hear it. But the bottom line is we got to know that we're here for one another, that we stick together, and we celebrate, we celebrate great days. And this is what we come to do is celebrate the birth of a baby. God is blessed with life. God's going to bless with health. God's going to move and minister, and we're just going to celebrate the great things God is doing. And that's what we come together today for. So on the sixth day of creation, God unveiled his plan for the family. He created a man to be the husband and father, and he created a woman to be a wife and a mother, that together they should find fulfillment as marriage partners and share in the marvelous conception of life. See, children are more than the insurance of con continuance of the human race or a particular family name. Children are treasures, treasures of life that are given by God and intended to be a part of the family. And each child's genetic makeup determines a great number of characteristics. However, the variable in every child's life is the nurture that he or she receives during the crucial developmental years. And this begins with the family. But the circle extends to include friends and teachers and neighbors and the church body also. So guys, I, you're bringing Emory today uh, 
before this church body is a public statement of your desire to be godly parents by following the practice of dedicating her to the Lord. And through her birth, your marriage or, or your family deal here, I should say, uh, can be blessed and it can be stretched. It's a unique situation. I don't think I've ever had a baby, baby dedication in this scenario. I'm not trying to put all your stuff out there, but it's obvious. I mean, you know. <laughs> but the wonder of the love for Emory has the ability to uh, help her to grow and include uh, her in your life without anybody else receiving any less. And that's because love isn't just an emotion, it's an attitude. It's an action and it's a choice. So to you two, I, I just want to say that the dedication of a baby is really more of a dedication of the parents to fulfill their role in developing this child. And for that reason, I want to ask you some questions. Uh, and they're actually commitments. And I want you to think about them before you answer, but um, it's very serious as it pertains to little Emory. Will you nurture your relationship in a way that this child can grow up in a home where you guys demonstrate your love for her and for the children. If so, say we will. Will you pray for Emory? Pray for her future, even now, so that she will develop in an environment of prayer support. She realizes she's got people that'll pray for her. Will you take Emory to church and teach her the truths of Scripture? If so, say we will. All right. Will you? To the best of your ability, demonstrate to Emory what it means to live Christ-like and walk in the Spirit. And today, do you give this child to the Lord for life service and how and where he chooses? All right. See, no family raises a child in isolation. Children are uh, impressionable, learn both good and bad from those around them, no matter what their age is. You know, we, we, we have the ability to to make this child or we have ability to break this child you know I think about when I was raised up in church and I all I've ever known is church I tell people all the time I was church of God nine months before I was born I mean I, I, all I've ever known is church but I can tell you there are times in my church that it helped me to be strong and there's times in my church that made me want to just run away there's times I didn't want to have anything to do with church because of the way church acted are you with me so we had the opportunity to make a difference in Emory's life, good or bad. But I choose to do good in her life and to help her to, to have a, a solid relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So knowing the need for spiritual role models, will we as a church, will we as a body of Christ and this congregation faithfully serve this family and their child? Will, will this, this child become our spiritual child? Will, will we provide the opportunity for Emory to grow in an atmosphere of Christian support, a place of worship, true worship unto God, and also biblical teaching. If so, church, say we will. All right. I want to have a prayer. I believe for God to touch her and minister her. And I generally hold the child, but she's squirming this morning. So we're going to let her mama hold her because she might not want me to hold her. Home. I want you guys to gather in as family and friends. And uh, church, I want to ask you to stand and stretch your hands this way. We're going to believe for God to touch this family, that God would minister to them and God, to, just to draw them even closer to one another and that God would just touch Emory and uh, just help her to be raised in a way that, that God would have her to be raised and that she'd live her life in a way that brings glory and honor to God. Amen? I believe God has a purpose for her. I believe just like for me and you that God's already spoke her in from the beginning. I believe that God has a plan for her life and that God wants to fulfill that plan. And I'm praying that God would remove any obstacles any stresses, anything that would hinder her from fulfilling what God... Listen, just like God has a plan for her, the enemy has a plan. He wants to destroy her and kill her. But we stand together today and pray for this family that God would touch them and just do a work in their life, all right? Let's pray together. Stretch your hands this way. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift this family up to you. I pray today, God, that you would move and minister in a mighty way, God, that you would bring glory and honor to your name. Touch Emory today, God. I pray that you... Anything that the enemy would try to do to try to hinder her or stop her and her growth in you, God. I pray, God, that the, the Bible that will give her, God, that she will allow that to be a lamp to her feet and a light to her path. I pray, God, for this family, God, that you administer them and strengthen them and encourage them. This commitment that they made is not just for Emory, God, but for themselves. God, that they will walk in a way and live their lives in a way that brings glory and honor to you. 
God, that they would search their hearts and they would examine themselves to make sure that they stand right before you, that they could be the examples before her. God, I know when my first baby was born, it put a lot of things in perspective. It brought a lot of things and made them a lot clearer to me what life was all about. And God, when I held that baby for the first time, it changed my world. God, I can only imagine what this family is going through, dealing with, and having to face the emotions of ups and downs and ins and outs of life. God, in it all, you've been true and you've been faithful. And I just pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you would touch this family and that you would strengthen them, encourage them. Even though the dynamic of this family might not be what, what, is, what most people would expect or see or think, but God, they, they're still a unit. There's still a bond there. God, all of us brought together with Emory. And I just pray, God, that first and foremost, that you would help Emory to be the center of all what you have for this family. And they would put their focus there. And God, that they would lead her in a way and show her what it is to live their lives in a way that brings glory and honor to you and make it about the kingdom. Unashamedly, God, let them serve you, love you, live their lives in a way that brings glory and honor to you. I thank you, Father, for what you're doing. I thank you, God, that you've brought us together for this moment. I believe with all my heart is an ordained moment of your purpose and your plan. God, without any fear or any inhibition, God, I can declare today, God, that you've got your hand in this situation and that you're working all things for your good. God, I pray that your will be done, that your name be glorified. And Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. We ask all that we ask in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Give the Lord a head clap of praise, would you? Well, this is normally where I give a Bible and a certificate, but I left that at the house. You know, you just never know. I mean, you know, we, we done tried this three or four times. So. so the first three times, she forgot the baby. The third time, I forgot the Bible, all right? Come on, one more time, give the Lord praise. Thank you, guys. God bless y'all.
Yours forever 
Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody give the Lord praise. 
God's good. Amen. Aren't you glad that He's greater in your life? Praise the Lord. Our children's church can be dismissed at this time. Thank you all so much for coming out to worship today. If you want to grab your Bibles and turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're going to look at the last two verses, 57 and 58. Woo! Somebody say praise the Lord. All right. There's an advantage to uh, leading and worshiping, living with the pastor. Because then you can find out what he's preaching. Set your songs in that direction. I want to thank my little preacher Christian for going ahead and stepping on my message. Can't tell him anything. I'm just pick it. God's good. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 15. Begin with verse 57. The Bible said, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I want to focus on that 57th verse this morning. It says, 57, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. All the songs this morning have been attributing victory to God. And we're going to talk about that for just a moment. But because He's got the victory, we've got the victory. The victory we have is in Christ Jesus. It's victory in Jesus. Father, thank You for this opportunity once again that You've given us to come to Your house. I pray today, God, that You would help me to deliver Your Word, to deliver it, God, with courage, with vigor, God, with fervor, passionate, God, as we've talked about over the last couple of weeks. God, I pray today that you would help us to walk out of this place understanding that we are victorious. God, that we will begin to live in victory, walk in victory, talk like victorious people, God, that we would be more than conquerors through Christ that loved us. God, to hold our head up because not of who we are, but whose we are. God, I pray today that as every person in here receives this word today, let it challenge our hearts to live differently. God, to live in a way that lets the devil know we're not afraid and we're not going to live in fear. We're not going to live with doubt and despair, but God, we're going to live victorious because greater is he that is in us than he that's in this world. God, I thank you today for the victory. I thank you, God, that we are overcomers. Thank you, Lord, that we are more than conquerors. Thank you, Lord, that we triumph in you. Help us to do what we do today for your kingdom and for your glory. God, to keep our head high, and our mouths open, God, praising you and magnifying you for you are a good God. We bless your name today. For all that's done and all that's accomplished, we're sure to praise you, give you the glory and the honor. We ask all that we ask in Jesus' name. And everybody said, as you're being seated, tell your neighbor, you have the victory. So before we talk about us, let's talk about him for just a moment. I think about Jesus and the victory that he had, and I think about some of these songs that have been sung this morning. And I begin to think about in Revelation chapter 1 where the Bible said that Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He said, I am he that liveth and was dead, but I'm alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and hell. The Bible declared that Jesus, as he hung on the cross, taking his last breath, that he cried out, it is finished. It was an overcoming victory that Jesus defeated the death. On that third day, the Bible tells us that they had rolled a stone in front of that grave and had, had secured it with soldiers and secured it as, as best they could to try to keep Jesus in that grave. But on that third day, on that early Sunday morning, we know the rest of the story, how that the Holy Ghost came into that room and resurrected that dead body back to life again and the grave could not hold that resurrected Savior. How that that stone was blown away and Jesus came walking out victorious and in John he declared, I now live that you may live also. I come to tell somebody this morning that my Jesus is not dead my Jesus is not in the grave anywhere my Jesus is not laid up barred away in some tomb somewhere but my God is alive he's seated on the throne of heaven earth is his footstool and Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father what do you mean preacher he's seated I'm telling you when you finish your work you sit down that's exactly what Jesus did he sat down at the right hand of the Father because the work that he was sent to do was finished now he's there ever making intercession for you and us thank God
God for the victory. Listen, I'm telling you, he's been given a name that the scripture said in the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow of things in the earth and things under the earth and that the tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is Lord, no matter what his circumstances are. My Bible tells me, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched by the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. What are you saying, preacher? Sickness bows at the name of Jesus. Disease bows at the name of Jesus. Broken homes can be put back together at the name of Jesus. No matter what wayward you are, no matter what drugs you might be into, no matter what alcohol you're on, I'm telling you, when you call on the name of Jesus, whosoever shall call on that name shall be saved. There's great power and there's great victory in the name of Jesus. Thank God for the power of the name of Jesus. When I clear, declare that name, devils have to flee. When I declare that name, demons have to come out. When I declare that name, sicknesses must be healed. There's great victory in the power of the name of Jesus. Can somebody shout Jesus with me this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, listen, it looked like sure defeat in the Garden of Eden. Looked like sin was going to overtake. Looked like the serpent and the Satan had won the victory. But in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, God stepped on the scene. And the Bible said that he declared at that moment, he said, I'll put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. What was God declaring? He said, looks like sin won, but I've still got the last word and victory will be mine. He said, I'm going to raise up a seed that's going to crush your head, Satan. I'm going to raise up a seed that's going to be victorious. And all through the history books and all through the prophetic books, we see the declaration of the soon coming Messiah who would be Jesus. And the Bible tells us in Galatians that the Bible said, and at an appointed time, that a virgin brought forth a son and laid him in swaddling clothes in a manger. Listen, friend, at that appointed time that God destined in history, God brought forth his son named Jesus. And he laid there and for three and a half years. He ministered on the earth. As a matter of fact, the Bible declared that if all the things that Jesus had done had been written down, the books of the world could contain it. Let me tell you what he did. The Bible said that when he came into a city, all that had faith to be healed, he healed them all. Listen, sickness couldn't stand in the presence of God. He caused the lame to walk. He caused the deaf to hear. He caused the blind to see. There's something great about this man named Jesus. Listen, a man could be four days in the grave and Jesus step at the foot of the grave and declare Lazarus come forth and death had to turn Lazarus lose. Why? Because there's victory in Jesus. A man could have been born blind and Jesus speak the word for life to come in those eyes and all of a sudden that man born blind was able to see again. Why? Because there's victory in Jesus. You're sitting here today and some of you are drug addicts, some of you are alcoholics, some of you are fornicators, but you're sitting here saved and whole by the grace of God. Why? Because there's victory in Jesus. My God has set you free. He that the Son has set free is free indeed. There is victory in Jesus. Woo, glory to God. Woo, glory to God. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that God's got the victory. I'm thankful that the devil is defeated. I'm thankful that hell has no power over my life. I'm thankful that sickness can't hold my body. Listen, it might kill my physical body, but it can't kill my soul. Listen, for me to be absent in body is to be present with the Lord. So I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that there's nothing that the enemy can bring to me. Nothing. Listen, there's no weapon formed against me that shall prosper. Why? Because I've got victory in Jesus. My family and I went and watched a movie last night. If you get a chance to see it, I'd encourage you to go see it. The name of the movie is Let There Be Light. The movie is about one of the biggest atheists in all the world that comes to know Jesus and begins to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. But in that, in that movie, the mom contracts cancer and she's about to die. And I, there's one line that stuck out to me. She said, I'm saved. I know who Jesus is. Her son had asked her about, about dying and she said, I believe to the Christian there's no such thing as death because death is defeated. Listen, friend, I'm not afraid to die because I'm a, I've got eternal life in Jesus Christ. Death in this world is just life in the next one. 
Ooh, I like the way she put it. She said, listen, sometimes, you know, sometimes I might go in the other room, and when I go in the other room, it doesn't mean that I'm in your presence. I'm just in the other room. She said, but that doesn't mean I'm not looking out for you. That doesn't mean I'm not caring for you. Listen, when death, that's kind of what we do. We go to the next room. We go to the next place where God's called us to. But that doesn't mean we're lost. That doesn't mean we're not, you know, we're, we're not living a life like we used to. But that just means that we've gone into the fullness of what God said. Listen, I'm just going to the other side. I'm just going there to wait for a little while. I've got loved ones that have passed on and I didn't go up to them and say, well, goodbye. I told them, see you later. You know why? Because I've got a promise in the word that death is defeated and I know I'm going to see them again one day. I know like Jesus promised. He said, listen, I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Listen, I've got a promise of hope. Listen, I don't hope like most people in this world hope, but I hope in Jesus Christ. If I'd had hope in Christ, in this life only I'm of all men most miserable but my hope is in the Lord listen he said listen brother I would not have you to be ignorant concerning them which are asleep for we shall be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye for this corruptible must put on incorruption this mortal must put on immortality then it's going to be brought to pass the saying oh grave where is thy victory oh death where is thy sting he said but thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ I come to tell you today that you don't have to be fearful you don't have to be in despair. You don't have to be overwhelmed by doubt, but you can stand forth because you know like Job said, I know my Redeemer liveth and I'm going to stand with him on that day. I come to tell you that the victory is yours in Jesus Christ. It's yours. It's yours. He wants you to have the victory. He wants you to understand the victory. He wants you to know that that victory is yours. So, so today we want to talk about victory in Jesus, but we already understand the victory that Jesus has. But it ain't about just the victory that Jesus has. It's the victory that we have in Jesus. I, I, I've been singing that old song. Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me. With his redeeming blood, he loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I don't know about you, ma'am, but I'm thankful for the victory that I have in Jesus. Woo! The song, one of the verses says, I heard about those mansions. Woo! I can't wait to see him. I can't wait to behold him. Listen, it'd be all right with me if we just start shouting right now and the trumpet of God sound and we step onto the other side. It'd be all right with me if God called us home today. I don't have anything I need to clear up. I don't have anything I need to fix. I don't have anybody I got to go apologize to. Thank the Lord that my mind and my conscience is clear in Jesus today that God's grace has washed away all my sin. His blood has cleansed me and made me new. Thank God I got victory today. It'd be all right if I stepped on the other side. Anybody with me this morning? All right, the rest of you will catch up here in a little bit. Praise the Lord. Listen, the victory that we have. See, as a follower of the Lord, you don't have to go through life downtrodden and defeated. When you know who you are in Jesus, when you know who Jesus is in you, you don't have to walk around downtrodden and defeated. Come on now. I I'm trying to. I'm trying to think of somebody. About the only one I can think of is The Rock. You know, you know that actor, the wrestler, and that big old dude that, that acts a lot called The Rock. You know, if, if he became your best friend and you was walking around town, you wouldn't worry about some drug dealer jumping out at you or somebody with a gun or a knife jumping out at you. You'd have The Rock on your side. He'd be ready to give somebody the people's elbow. You know what I'm talking about? I know you do. All right. You say, what's that guy doing? Listen, if you've never seen him, that's a big old dude. He's a big boy. If I was walking around with him in town, I'd, I'd probably, I wouldn't walk around scared looking around every corner. I'd walk with him. Yeah, mess with me. I got my buddy to rock with me. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff. I wouldn't be afraid. I wouldn't have fear. And I got somebody that is the rock. Come on now. He might have muscles. And he might have brawn. But oh, the name of Jesus is stronger than any weapon that any man could ever produce. 
I don't care what Kung Yung Sung Hung John, whoever his name is over in North Korea, I don't care what he would do or try to threaten us with, but if I can speak and declare the name of Jesus, it's greater than any nuclear weapon that they could ever produce. I don't care what some Iranian does or says or threatens the people of the United States of America or what they can put in the air, but I'm telling the greatest weapon that the church has is to actuate the name of Jesus. When we declare that name, I'm telling you, great things can happen. There's great power in that name. I don't have to walk around downtrodden and defeated for I know greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world that my God is for me and if God is for me nobody or nothing can be against me can somebody say amen sees too many people in the Christian world today they walk around downtrodden they walk around defeated they walk around oppressed they walk around deflated if you will I mean, listen, it it, it just sickens me when I see a Christian walk into church and look like somebody done kicked their dog. Mad, frowning, upset, can't get a smile on their face. Listen, man, when I know that I'm walking into the presence of the Lord, every need can be met. According to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I know that he's given me a measure of faith and that if I'll actuate that faith, I can have it as a grain of a mustard seed and I can speak to the mountain that's trying to hinder me and that mountain must be removed. I'm telling you, friend, I've got faith in Jesus. When I walk in, it doesn't matter what the enemy's thrown at me during the week. It doesn't matter what the world's trying to do me or hold me down. I'm telling you, when I think about Jesus, when I come to his presence, when I feel his glory, I'm telling you, I can't help but hold my head up, throw up my hallelujah, shout my praise to the Lord, wave my hand toward heaven and let the world know, let heaven know, and let hell know that I know in whom I believe and I'm persuaded that my God is able to perform that which he has spoken over my life. I know that I've got the victory and I'm not defeated for God is with me and God will see me through. So what are you saying to me today? I'm saying to you, you need to come over and find out what it's like to be on the winning side. You need to know what it's like to be on the winning side. Some of you have been fighting with losers for so long, you don't know what it is to win. I, I go to church, preacher. I, I hang around people that, that talk about Jesus. Listen, I'm not talking about talking about him. I'm talking about walking with him. I'm talking about walking in the victory. I'm talking about having the faith that says, you know what, my God, we'll see. I'm ta- Listen, I'm not talking about just some kind of le- lecture or some kind of speech. I'm talking about an actual relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ to know that he's going to see you through, to know that God is the Lord of all, to know that he's the one that's going to make a way. To- Listen, David understood what it was to walk with the Lord. David understood even in the trying times, even when things seemed to be going wrong. He said in Psalm 34, verse 1, he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. You know what David was saying? Come on, devil, give it your best shot. I'm still going to praise the Lord. Come on, world, try to mess with me, but I'm still going to praise the Lord. Come on, sickness, get in my body, but I'm still going to praise the Lord. God's looking for some radical people that in the midst of all the chaos and the noise will still stand up, throw their head up, and declare, blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm looking for somebody that knows what it's like to walk in victory. We are on the winning side. Again, verse 57 of 1 Corinthians 15 says, Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. There's four thoughts that I want to use in this verse that's going to encourage you. Number one is victory. That victory comes through Jesus. Real victory. Real understanding what winning is all about is in Jesus. And it's yours. The victory is yours. See, God has no attention of allowing you to lose battles of life. He doesn't want you to lose. Why? Because his name's riding on you. God doesn't want you to, listen, oh, glory to God. God wants you to be a winner. God wants you to be victorious. I remember not long ago, well, it's been a, a, quite a few years ago, I was praying with a gentleman in an altar, and he, he had, he had come down and gave his heart to the Lord. And when he would pray, I could smell the odor of alcohol in his life. In his mouth, I could smell it. And you could just tell he was, he was messed up on something. He'd been drinking and stuff. But I prayed with him, and I prayed with him. And all of a sudden, the more he prayed, the less I began to smell the smell of alcohol. God was sobering him up. You say, preacher, you done lost your mind. No, no, no. God sobered him up. 
And all of a sudden, that man had his head down. He was feeling guilt and shame and oppression of the enemy because he'd messed up. He'd been drinking and things. Were, listen, all this was happening in that same altar call. And I'm trying to, I think his name was William. And I said to him, I said, William, I said, I want to tell you something, sir. You might feel downtrodden, but God has bore your guilt. God has bore your shame. The blood of Jesus cleanses you from all your sin. I want you to know that you're victorious in Jesus and you're a winner. As soon as I said you're a winner, he threw his head up, put his his arms up, begin to jump up and down and said, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. I'm a winner. Listen, I would to God that we shot in the devil's face and say, listen, you might call me a loser, but my God's declared I'm a winner. My God has declared me I'm victorious. My God has declared victory in my life, and that's what I have in Jesus Christ. Victory is yours. Listen, we get happy when we sing about the victory that God has. We get happy when we sing about the victory that Jesus has. But victory is ours in Jesus Christ. See, this victory, the Bible, go back to that verse, please. That, 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 the victory is something that God gives us. Look what he says. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory. You've already got the playbook. Listen, if I was a coach of a football team, and I was playing an opposing football team, and I had their playbook. As soon as I seen the alignment, I'd call the defense or I'd call the offense a certain way because I had their playbook. I'd win every single game. Come on now. I've got the playbook. He's already told me the wiles of the enemy. He's already told me what the devil's going to try to do. He's already told me what he's going to try to tell me. He's already told me how he's going to try to deceive me. He's already told me how he's going to try to mess with my mind. He's already told me in the book what I got to look out for. As a matter of fact, he told me, he said, put on the whole armor of God that you can stand against the wiles of the devil. Can I tell you today, I've already got the playbook. And as long as I got the playbook and I follow by the playbook, victory is mine. There's victory in this word. There's victory in the, in the powerful word of God. There's victory in this friend and all you got to do is go back to the book and say God give me victory God help me to understand God give me clarity and every single time every single situation my God is able to speak into your life and show you which way you must go that you can walk in the victory he said I give it to you I give you the victory I didn't have to earn it I didn't have to I didn't have to do anything to make God like me anymore it's just like salvation. It's a gift of God. The victory. Because of what Jesus did. Do you hear me? It's because of what Jesus did. Woo, I know it occurred some 2,000 years ago. I know on that Golgotha's hill that hell was having a party and that the Roman soldier was looking as he breathed his last. I know that that death looked like the sting of death had taken him, but literally what happened was is that he took the sting of death for us so that we could have the victory through him. Listen, friend, victory is yours in Jesus Christ. He has given it unto you. You don't have to earn it. No, it's like salvation. F victory is a free gift of God's grace. I heard a story. Not long ago of a little kid that was riding up in the middle part of the car with his dad. So all of a sudden this bee got into the car and was flying around and said the son was real scared. He said, I got real scared as I sat there. Then all of a sudden his dad reached up and got that bee and held it in his hand for a minute. Said he just held it there. He was thinking he was going to throw it out the window. He was thinking, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm, he's going to squish it and kill it. But after a few moments, the dad let the bee go. The son went frantic again and got all carried away again and was all, all disturbed again. He said, no, 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 son. There's nothing to be afraid of now. He said, why, daddy? He said, his dad held out the hand and right in the middle, the stinger was in the hand of the father. Whoo, glory to God. He said, son, there's nothing. That bee can't hurt you now. I took his sting. Listen, friend, death can't hurt you. Jesus took its sting. I'm telling you today that God has took the sting of death. God has took the power of hell. He's got the keys of death and hell. He is victorious. And you don't have to walk around afraid and squirm every time a little demon bee comes at you. You have to know that God has already given you the victory over it. God's already given you the power to overcome. God said, I am more than a conqueror. God has declared in his word that victory has been given unto us. This is the victory that God gives to us. Number three. Number three. Stand this verse, please. It's true in so many things of God. Victory is given us by God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So this expression, this title of the famous song that I sung just a moment ago, Victory in Jesus, comes to mind. Since Jesus 
is Lord of all. As declared in Acts 10, verse 36, at the last part it says, Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. See, he can and he will triumph in every single situation. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you're facing today. Give it to Jesus. I don't care what the report says. Give it to Jesus. I don't care what people have said. Give it to Jesus. I don't care what the phone call was before you came to church trying to rob your faith. Just give it to Jesus. I don't care if the car broke down on the way and you had to find another means. Just give it to Jesus. I don't care if something broke down in the house but you came on to the house of God anyway. Just give it to Jesus. He is Lord of all. Every situation. Every problem. Every circumstance he can and he will triumph in every single situation listen how many of you know that God's given us promises come on he's given us promises the Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and 20 look what it says for all the promise of God in him are yes and him amen to the glory of God through us so his promises are yes to his glory through us promises over your life what does God declare listen we can go back to the book there's a lot of promises that have been declared of your life there may have been some things that in prayer you prayed about and God said I got that that's a promise in him there are yes and there are amen what's amen mean amen means let it be let it be so when you declare amen at the end of a prayer, you're telling to God, God, what I've asked you, what I've declared, what i put out there, let it be. Let it be so. God, I want you to do what I ask you to do. Just let it be. Listen, when you shout amen in a church service, you're backing up the preacher and you're saying to the preacher and you're saying to God, God, let it be. I believe the word, amen. I believe what the word is declaring, amen. I believe what the word has said about me, amen. I believe that your promises are true, amen. I believe your promises are yes, amen. I believe your promises are amen, amen. God, let it be over my life. Listen, friend, if you're walking around sick, hold up your head because he said, I'm the Lord thy God that heals all your diseases. Yes and amen. God has promised healing for your body. If you've got family members that are lost and undone without him, listen, the Bible said, train up a child in the way that they should go when they're old, they shall not depart from it. That is a promise of God. It is yes and amen. If your marriage is on the rocks, if things are happening in your life that seem to have everything in a battle, you stand up for what God hath joined together. Let not God man put a Sunder. It is a promise of God. Yes and amen. I could spend three hours just declaring God's promises over your life right here. And every one of them are yes and amen. Why? Because they bring glory to God through us. Look what it says here. Through us. It's glory to God through us. God wants to bring the victory through us because God gets the glory and we get the blessing. You're blessed. Wednesday night, I talked about it in the book of Revelation. The Bible said, blessed is he that hears the word of this prophecy and keeps it. So when you hear this word and you keep this word, there's a blessing on your life. When you live this word and walk in this word and abide in this word, there's a blessing on your life. Listen to me, friend. God has called you blessed. Listen, I can say you're blessed. Other people can say you're blessed, but the word of God says you're blessed. The glory of God is going to be revealed through your life, through your life, so that God can get the glory, but the blessing is yours. There's a blessing on your life. Listen, friend, I don't want to get too tangled up in theology and hanging up in this stuff, but there's things that God has declared over other generations prior to us, but they're generational blessings. Listen, we talk a lot about generational curses, how that my daddy did this or my granddaddy did that and that's why what's going on in my life is happening but I'm telling you, the Bible also declares there's a generational blessing that God will bless you three four generations right down the line listen friend when you begin to declare the blessing of God my children are what they are because there's a blessing on their life because God's blessed me and my wife God blessed my parents God blessed her parents and that blessing is just filtered right on down I'm telling you, when you begin to walk in the fear of God when you begin to walk in the blessing of God it'll transcend through your family it'll transcend through your your life it'll bless the people that come after you there is a generational blessing that's on your life people say I'm walking in the blessing of Abraham God told Abraham he said wherever you set your foot I'm gonna give you the land 
Look up to the heavens. You can count the stars. I'll, get, I'll bless your seed as the, star, as the number of the stars in the heaven. If you can count the sand on the seashore, I'll bless your seed as much as the sand is. God said, I'm going to bless your life, Abraham. Listen, friend, he walked in it. He lived it out. He walked by faith and not by sight. What did the Bible say? The Bible said that Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him as righteousness. The Bible said that God worked through Abraham speaking things that were not as if though they were. What was Abraham declaring? He was just declaring the promise of God. What God had already said was he is. He just began to go ahead and speak it. Listen, it, I, listen, friend. You might call it weird. You might call it crazy. You might call it name it and claim it or blab it and grab it. But if it's God's word, you have the ability and the opportunity to declare God's word and speak by faith those things that are not as if though they were. Why? Because they're promises and they're yes and they're amen in God. The victory is yours. The victory is yours. So no matter what or how many promises God has made, they are yes in Jesus Christ. So what's this all about? Why, why, why this thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ? we got to be able to boldly proclaim, I've got victory in Jesus. Number four, the ongoing victory in Christ in this fallen and hostile world is something for which to give thanks to God. Here we come in this, this time, in this age of darkness, of evil, all this stuff that's going on in the world today. Listen, friend, all you got to do is flip on the news for about five minutes. You know we're living in a dark, evil world. I know I say that to you a lot, but I'm telling you, it gets darker by the day, it seems like. And I want to tell you, the greatest weapon in darkness is light. It doesn't matter how small of a flicker of light it is. It has the ability to dispel a great amount of darkness. I could shut the doors and shut off the lights in this room and it would be pitch dark. If you've ever been here with everything shut off, it's dark in here. But I could come stand in the room and take a match and strike that little single match and hold it up and you'd be amazed how much that little source of light would begin to dispel darkness in this room. It, listen, it would cause a perimeter of light to come in, in, into this room that it would light up a good circumference of people that are sitting right here right now. The power of something so small and seemingly so insignificant. You think about it. The end of a match head is not big at all. But yet it has the ability to brighten up and can dispel so much darkness. You might feel small. You might feel insignificant. You might feel like, well, I don't have a title or I don't have a place. But I'm telling you this morning, you've got a purpose. And even though you seem small and even though you might seem insignificant, my Bible teaches me the principle that little is much when God is in it. Woo, glory to God. I don't care where you're at. Let, my Bible tells me, let my, your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I might not have much of a light. I might not be reaching the masses, but the ones that I can reach and have an effect, I want my light to shine that it can dispel the darkness. Listen, friend, you might live around a bunch of family that are lost and undone. Let your light shine. You might work in a place where people just don't love the Lord. Let your light shine. You might live in a neighborhood that people have lost their mind and acting all crazy, let your light shine. Why? Because we ought to give thanksgiving unto God because God has given us the victory in this fallen, hostile world. He said, listen, give thanks. Thank you. It's one of the early principles that my mom and dad taught me. When somebody does something for you, tell them thank you. I've gotten hit in the back of the head many a times for not being courteous. For not using ma'am and sir, saying thank you, even saying you're welcome. You know, if I was in a store with my dad and somebody in the store come up to me and said, here, son, I want to give you this. My dad always say, what do you say, son? Thank you. You know, it's a courtesy. It's a courtesy that in the church has slowly ebbed away. We've gone from being thankful to feel like we're deserving. Somewhere along the way, we got to get back to saying, Lord, I thank you. Because if it hadn't been for you, if it hadn't been for your grace, if it hadn't been for your mercy, God, I'd surely been lost. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, I sing this song a lot. Where would I be? You only know. I'm glad you see. Through eyes of love, a hopeless case. In an empty place, if not for grace. Clint Brown wrote that song. When he wrote that song, 
He was in a place of decision of how do I respond to a situation. What had happened was Clint had rented a, a, a chartered a jet plane for him and some staff, and they were going to a conference uh, somewhere out west. He's in Orlando, Florida. And, and when Clint got to the place where he had chartered a jet from, the, he, he tells the story that when he got there, they had given the jet to somebody else. Clint pitched a fit. He was angry. He done put his deposit down. He went back home stomping and fuming and carrying on. And when he sat down, he went into his living room, and he was, just, he was just upset that he'd put this money out there and they'd given his plane away. But he got home, and he flipped on the news channel, and when he listened to the news, there was a plane that had crashed with a man by the name of Payne Stewart on it. Some of y'all might remember him as a golfer. Payne Stewart was in the plane and died because they lost cabin pressure, and everybody in the plane passed out until the plane finally went off course and veered and crashed and died. He called back up the jet place and said, Listen, can I ask you what plane just crashed? They gave him the plane number, and it was the plane he was supposed to be on. Clint said immediately his attitude changed. He said he went to his piano and began to sit down and said, Where would I be? You only know. Listen. When I think about the goodness of God, when I think about where God's brought me from, when I think about what God's protected me from, listen, when we come into the house of God, we ought not to come in here like we deserve to be here. We ought not to come in here like we owe, uh, like God owes us something for showing up. We ought not to come in here and act like the church ought to do all these favors for us because we showed up and we done. But when I think about the goodness of God and where he's brought me from, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for his grace. I'm thankful for his mercy. I'm thankful for victory. I'm thankful for the blood. I'm thankful that God God saw me through. I'm thankful that God brought me through. I'm thankful that God is for me and that God's not against me. I'm thankful for the victory today. And he said, we ought to give thanks unto God because he's given us the victory. Romans 8 verse 37. The Bible says that in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. This verse repeats some of the same things of this previous verse of 1 Corinthians 15 and 57 that adds some insight. Number one, it, it, again, victory or conquering our obstacles comes through Jesus. If we're going to have victory, it's through Jesus. How do I stay in line with him? I stay in his word and I stay in prayer. Well, preacher, can't you give us some more great theological thought than that? No, that's it. Get in his word, stay in prayer, and you can have victory. I'll give you one more, okay? Do not, fel- do not forsake the fellowship of the saints. Because there's victory in the safety of a multitude. All right, I'm preaching to the Sunday crowd. We good. All right. So, so in all these things, we are more than conquerors. There's been a lot of conquerors in this world, but I'm more than a conqueror. I just didn't overcome, but I didn't even have to um- overcome with my own strength. I just had to trust. Woo, glory to God. I just had to trust him. And when I trusted him, he brought me to victory through Jesus Christ. (laughs) I didn't have to get my spiritual clothes dirty. I just had to pray and believe. (laughs) See, see some of y'all, y'all trying to bring victory to yourself, but victory's already been paid for if you'll just live it. Come on now. He said, I made you more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ that loves you. Look at the last portion of John 16, verse 33. He said, in this world, You will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Listen, this man Jesus that we serve, that old song, he fought the law and the law won. Well, Jesus fought the devil and the devil lost. Come on now. Listen, he said, don't you worry about it. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I can hold my head up because victory is mine. I can walk through this world. Victory is mine. I might be a sojourner and a traveler in this world, but I walk through it with victory because victory is mine in Jesus Christ. He said, I have overcome the world. Remember what he said again in Acts chapter 10, verse 36, that Jesus is Lord of all, including he is Lord over all this world's troubles. No matter what the world throws at you, no matter what the news talks about, Jesus is Lord of all. Of all, against all the foes, against all the enemies, the Lord said, I make you more than a conqueror. No matter what you're up against, it could be a giant. But just like the lion and the bear, them uncircumcised Philistines can fall also. What are you talking about, preacher? David stood on that battlefield before Goliath. 
And he declared, listen, you come at me with spear and sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. And just like the lion and the bear, you're going to fall also. And listen, when David released that stone, the Holy Ghost got a hold of that stone and flung it right into the forehead of Goliath. He fell down dead. But David said, listen, I'm not, a, I'm not satisfied with just a stone in the forehead and knocking him down. He went and got the giant's sword and stood up on top of him and cut the giant's head off. He, you know what he was declaring? He said, listen, I got victory, but I'm also going to be more than a conqueror. I'm going to take the head of Goliath back to Saul and say, look what the Lord has done. Listen, it's about time that we take the heads of heads of our enemies and go before the Lord and say, look what you've done. Lord, I praise you because you helped me cut the head off addiction. I praise you because you helped me break the head off of sin. I praise you because you helped me take the head off of sickness. I praise you, God. I give you thanks because you're giving me victory, God. Listen, friend, we ought to magnify the name of the Lord. Hold up our heads of our enemies that we've overcome. Cast them down at the feet of Jesus and declare victory. It's mine. I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ that loves us. Every enemy will fall. This victory in Jesus, this conquering, it's broad-based and it's pervasive. The Bible says in Romans 8, 37 again, he said, in all these things, in all these things, no matter what it is, no matter what's presented, in every situation, you're more than a conqueror. Well, preacher, sometimes it looks like I'm defeated. Let me tell you something. Even in what seems to be defeat, God can still bring victory. God can still bring victory. In the book of Kings, we see where the servant of God, the prophet comes to the Israelites and he says unto them, they're, they're, they're in despair because they have no water. Their cattle is getting is parsed and, 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 and the enemy has surrounded them and, and all these things are happening. The, the Moabites are about to take them over and, and the prophet of God comes to them and says, and they're in a valley and the prophet says, come and dig the valley full of ditches. And, and they're, they're thinking to themselves, what in the world are we going to spend all this time digging ditches? But they, they, they trusted the word of the Lord and they began to dig the ditches. Well, the next morning, they hadn't, it hadn't rained. No, there was no source of water to come to the valley. But when they got up the next morning, the, the ditches that they had dug by faith were full of water. And the Bible said it as the sun crested above the mountain and shone down into the valley, that the way the sun shone down on the ditches, it looked like blood. And the, and the enemy and, and the enemy army looked down and said, look, they've turned on themselves. They killed themselves. And, and, and now we can go down and take the spoil. So they took the armor down. They took the guard down. They, they weren't prepared for a fight. They thought they were going to go in there and plunder. But when they got in the middle of the camp, the Israelites attacked and God brought them great victory that day that, that many of those enemies fell. What you saying, preacher? The very thing that they thought was going to be their defeat because they thought they didn't have water. God turned around the thing that they thought was going to defeat them and made it their victory. When they didn't think they had water, God brought water. But God brought the enemy with their guard down right in the middle of the camp and they were able to overcome them and defeat them. What are you saying preacher? I'm telling you whatever you think is your lack, God said I've got plenty. Whatever you think is going to defeat you, God said I'll make it your victory. Listen, I remember another scene that looked a lot the same way. All of a sudden here Jesus was hanging on a cross. Hell was looking at and said we got him now look at the blood flowing they thought that blood was their victory but God turned it around and made it their defeat because that drop of blood that fell from Jesus was able to eradicate the sins of the world he shed their blood that blood and that blood cleanses us from all sin listen hell thought they could have a party but Jesus got up in victory and the victory is not just in Jesus but the victory is ours through Jesus So, so this empowerment, this enabling to conquer is an expression of Jesus' love. Look at Romans 8 verse 35. It talks about who shall separate us from the love of Christ. Listen, if I were the tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, none of these things, none of these things can separate us from Christ's love. And in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Paul makes the list. He said, listen, let's just go ahead and throw it all out there. It's tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril. So it don't matter. Throw whatever you want to throw at me. But he loves me. And in all these things, I am more than a conqueror because of the love of Jesus. I want to give you one final verse. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. He said, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. 
I want to pay attention to the first part of this verse. He always leads us in triumph. The first verse said, thanks be to God who gives us the victory. The second verse that we use today said, we are more than conquerors through Christ that loved us. And now he says, thanks again, because he leads us in triumph. No battle you go into, you have to fight alone. No fight that you have to confront, do you ever have to be alone. God is with you, and God will lead you in triumph. God will lead you in triumph. So what does this mean? It, it has some promises. Again, the promised triumph is in Christ. A daily close walk with Jesus is a source of great victory against the world, the flesh, and the devil. If you walk with him because he walks with you, there's an old song that says, And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me that I am his own. Woo! Listen, friend, I'm telling you, he's with us. He's walking with us, and there's victory in that. There's triumph in that. So this provision of God giving victory to us is worthy of thanks unto God. Come on, baby, let's play. Don't take it for granted. Don't ever take it for granted. The great things that God has done. Every day, you need to thank Him for making you triumphant. Every day, you need to wake up and say, Today is my day to shine for the glory of God, and victory is mine. I promise you, as you go through the day to day, the enemy has already constructed a plan to try to bring you down. But you need to remind yourself and remind God and remind others victory is mine in Jesus. Victory is mine in Jesus. So, so, so we give thanks unto Him. So we've saw words like victory. We saw words like conquerors. And now we're seeing words like triumph. So the pattern is clear. Victory, conquering, triumph. This is God's plan for those of us who receive and follow His Son, Jesus Christ. If you don't know Jesus... You're already defeated. The Bible says that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believed in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through Him might be saved. And later on He says this, those that have not received the Son, they're already condemned. Condemnation's already come to those that have not received Him. There is no victory outside of Jesus. Listen, you might win a ball game. You might win a trophy. You, you might win a promotion at, at your job. You, you, th there might be things that you win, but those are not real victories. I've got trophies. I've got plaques. I've got ribbons. And guess what? They fade. They tarnish. They get dusty, and they end up in the bottom of a closet somewhere. But the victory that I have in Jesus, it never fades. It never tarnishes. It never wears out. Matter of fact, it gets sweeter and sweeter. As the days go by, man, I'm telling you, I'm thankful for that victory. So, so, so the, this is God's plan. So how, how often can we expect God to give us victory in Jesus? That last verse says, always. He always causes me to triumph in Jesus Christ. Always. But you don't understand what I'm up against. Listen, if you're in Christ, victory is yours. You don't understand how hard this fight's been. I've been fighting this battle for 10, 15 years. Maybe you need to quit fighting. Cast your care on Jesus and let him take care of it. Maybe the reason you haven't experienced victory is because you've been trying to fight it in your own strength, your own ability. Give it to the Lord. Why do you want to wear yourself out? No wonder some of us are so tired and worn down. And, and I'll use scripture, weary and well-doing. We're trying to fight in our own strength, our own ability. We're trying to do it by our own, own, our own resources. Why are we wanting to work with something that's limited when something offered to us is unlimited? Why, why am I trying to, listen, some of the stupidest prayers I've ever prayed, and I'll use that word broad. I prayed this prayer one time. God, you didn't get me in, and I'm not going to ask you to get me out of it. How stupid am I? Maybe you've never prayed that prayer, but I felt bad. I got myself in it, and I didn't feel right asking God to get me out of it. But then I was smart because I said, God, I, I'm not asking you to get me out of it. Just give me strength to get through it. 
I just admit it, God, I still need you. Why didn't I just go ahead and say, God, I was ignorant. I was dumb. I made a wrong choice. Help. Why, why keep fighting with limited resources when everything that you need that pertains to life and godliness is found in Him? Everything you need. And when you're in Christ, when your life is sheltered in the arms of God, victory is yours. He always causes you to triumph in Christ Jesus. So every day I wake up a victor. Every day I wake up with victory. Every day I wake up and know that it's going to be a great day because I'm in Jesus. Don't raise your hand, but just in your mind, think about it for just a moment. How many of you are unhappy that Sunday is over sometimes because Monday is here? Uh, Monday. Got to go back to work. Oh. Wouldn't it be nice just to wake up on a Monday and say, Woo! Man! What a day this is going to be. Glory to God. Wouldn't it be nice to wake up on a Monday when you know you got tests and trials and stuff coming? Wake up and say, whoa, yeah, God, we're going to whoop them this week. Preacher, you done lost your mind. Man, I lost my mind a long time ago. He's created a clean heart in me, renewed my mind in Him. Man, you can wake up and know that victory is yours. Woohoo! No matter what the enemy throws at you, man, I got, God's got this thing. Victory is mine through Jesus. Temptations, trials, tribulations, man, I give all that stuff to God. God said, victory is yours, son. Just stay in me. Always causes us to try. God gives us victory. He makes us more than conquerors. He always makes me to try he brings me these victories through Jesus Christ. It is the free gift of God. God gives this unto me. I don't have to earn it. The victory God gives, this God-given victory is broad-based in all these things. In other words, I'm going to cover it all if you'll just trust me and stay and abide in me. It's always victory. It's not hit. It's not miss. Always. We're made victorious because Jesus loves us. What do you do? I gotta remember every day I gotta thank God that I'm on the winning side. I'm on the winning side. Some of you are gonna take this, what I'm about to say offensively, but I'm just being real with you. How how long you wanna choose to lose? How how long you wanna choose to continue to go backwards? How how long do you wanna continue to choose to, to live your life for you? Rather than live your life for Him and really have victory. Preacher, I don't understand why you act the way you act. You're always happy and laughing and bubbly. Listen, there's down, there's down days, I can promise you that. That's my family. There's days that I'm just depressed, no prayer. You know what I have to do? I have to go and encourage myself in the Lord. Remind myself who I belong to. I have to remind myself sometimes that victory is mine. When I'm looking at a possible situation, I have to remind myself, with men it's impossible, with God all things are possible. Listen, we've had bad doctor reports come to our house. There's times I've gone in a, you know, I got a, I got a phone call Friday from my sister telling me my Aunt Kim is bleeding on the brain and fear strikes you all of a sudden. You're like, whoa, 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 this can't be happening. And then all of a sudden peace comes in and God says, I got this. This ain't caught me by surprise. I made the statement before, when you're dealing with your situations, God's not sitting up on his throne biting his fingernails trying to figure out what he's going to do. No, no, no. He's already got it in order, friend. He's always looking out for your good. He's always looking out for your good. I believe that all things work for the good of those that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. I believe that. I believe that if it's good, it's for a good purpose. And what you might define as bad, God will still use it for a good purpose. Everybody else might say, Whoo, you might be, listen, you might have a bunch of friends like Job. Look how bad things are for him. Boy, he's really messed up. But God says, listen, what everybody else meant for evil, God will turn it around for good. 
<laughs> so, so why, why we always want to walk around carrying our baggage and our stuff and our sins and our heartaches and our pains? But God said, I want to give you victory over that. Why do you want to continue to live in the bondage and the addiction? Why do you want to continue to live in the life that just is oppressed? You can't even smile. You're not even happy. I'm happy in Jesus. Do I have temptations and trials? Absolutely, man. The devil tries to beat me up every day. But do I lay down my head at night with victory? Absolutely. You know why? Because one of the last things I do every night is talk to God and get in His Word and remind myself. I get up in the morning with His Word and I go to bed with His Word. I'm reminding myself, I'm book, I'm book, uh, 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 book uh, sh- shelving my life and saying, listen, everything I am is about the Word and prayer. Book in. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm, I'm trying to hold my life together. Listen, I want, I want all the junk in the middle of my day to be sandwiched between the Word and prayer. That's what changes us. That's what helps us. Victory is yours. That's already a promise. And remember, His promises are yes and amen. But if you're here this morning, and number one, you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. I'm not talking about, listen, I'm not talking about some prayer you prayed when you were five or seven that led you in a Bible class. I'm talking about where you live in right now. How's your life right now with Christ? If it's not where it needs to be, today is a good day to begin to walk in the victory. If you're here this morning and you've strayed away from the things of God or if you're here this morning and you're, you're, you're living under the oppression of the world and the cares of life and everything's just bombarding you and you've lost faith and you've lost hope and you don't know what to do, I'm telling you, today's a good day to say, God, I just take all this junk and I'm giving it to you. And walk out of this place free today. The enemy's bombarded you with addiction and bondage and he's trying to tempt you and hold you down and you're just falling to the influence of it. Today's a good day come and get victory over it. If you've got issues in your family, in your home, and the enemy's just trying to trying to afflict you and conflict you and trying to bring turmoil and stuff, listen, get your head above the storm waters and remind yourself that he's the one that can say, peace be still, and all that stuff can lay down. I can imagine, as a minister, what David dealt with. Time and time again being bombarded by the enemy, having to hide in caves because people were trying to kill him. The Bible said that there were times David would have to encourage himself in the Lord. I could, I could, I could understand. David had to sit back and say, wait a minute, God. This is not what I'm called to. You, you said you were going to give me a throne that, would, that, that, that a son would sit on that would last forever. Here I am hiding in a cave. Over here cutting a hem of a garment off a man that's relieving himself just to show him that, I, that I'm not against him. It happened. You know, I, 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 this is not what I'm called to. This is not what my life amounts to. What, what am I doing here? But in all that, God was using it to prepare David. Why? Because God was ultimately going to give him the victory, and he did it. And even when he got to that place of purpose, David still had failures. David still had bad choices. And in that, he still cried out to God, and he found He's a God that forgives. He's a God that loves. He's a God that heals. He's a God that can take the brokenness of life and put it all back together again. Listen, the scars might be there, but they're just reminders of His mercy. How about you this morning? What about your life? What about your situation? Saints of God, I need you to intercede right now. I believe that God wants to give somebody the victory over sin. I believe God wants to give somebody the victory over hell. Fear, doubt. I believe God wants to give you victory over addiction and bondage. I believe God wants to give you victory over the things that the enemy just tries to bombard you with and hold you down with. God wants to help you to know that you are more than a conqueror in Christ that loves you. There's some homes here, there's some marriages here that you're really fighting some things and and, and, and the enemy seems to be trying to bring a wedge and a divide. But I'm telling you, if you'll give that thing to God, I stand here as a testimony. Because the enemy tried to do the same thing to my home, my marriage. But I stand here as a testimony to tell you that me and my wife love each other more today than we've ever loved each other. And God has given us victory over some stuff that the enemy tried to bring a divide and a wedge. And I'm telling you, God can do it for you. Absolutely, no doubt in my mind, but you've got to give it to Him. you got sin in your life. you got stuff that's holding you back from your relationship with Jesus. Bring it to the Lord. He said, I'll cleanse you from all of it. Old things can pass away and all things can become new in your life. 
He can do that for you today. So I want to ask you at this moment, as an invitation, if you're here this morning, you're tired. You're tired of living in what seems to be a losing battle and you're ready to step onto the winning side. You're, you're tired of, of sin and, and stuff trying to mess in your life and hold you back. You're tired of, of fears and doubts and worries and all this stuff trying to hold you back. You're, you're ready to step out and be free because he that the Son has set free is free indeed. Man, if you want that kind of freedom, today's your day. You want that freedom in your home, your marriage, today's your day. You want that freedom for your kids, today is your day. It's up to you. I'm going to ask you to make one bold step. If you sit up, stand up from where you are and just come and stand right across here. So I want to pray with you. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to try to make a mockery of you, but if you're here, come on. If you're here today and you're wanting that victory, you're wanting that real freedom in Christ, come on and stand with my sister. The good news is you don't have to stand alone now. Come on, I know there's more than this. Come on, bring it to Jesus. Bring your hurt, bring your pain, bring your disappointments, bring your anger, bring your frustrations, bring your sin, bring your failures. Bring it to Jesus. He specializes in those things. How about it, visitor? How about, how about those of you that thought maybe you'd just come in to, just to participate in the service? Listen, this is open for everybody. Bible says, whosoever will, let them call in the name of the Lord, and they shall be saved. If you don't know the Lord today, and I'm not judging, I'm just asking you the question. If you don't, if you call on the name of the Lord today, you can be saved. Everything can be well between you and the Lord. Come on, saints of God, pray with me. Don't worry about who's getting up or getting down. I just need you to pray. We're wrestling for people's souls this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, I've done my best to be obedient to you today. For these that have come, we're going to pray and believe, God, that you're going to give them the victory. For the ones that didn't come, God, I pray that some way, somehow, you'll deal with their hearts. They might even be asked the question, why do I need to step up and come up there? It's, it's a testimony. The Bible said if we confess with our mouth and believe with our heart, the Lord Jesus Christ, then we shall be saved. It's a testimony. You're getting up and declaring I want Jesus. It's not about trying to embarrass anybody. It's just about saying, hey, I, I'm desperate for him. So, Lord, I'm asking you to extend mercy, extend grace to these that have come. They're not worried about the shame or worried about the guilt or worried about the heartache. They're just saying, hey, we, we, we recognize we need the Lord. We need his help. We need his strength. I'm asking, Lord, that you would move in their lives and minister to them in the name of Jesus. As we pray and intercede with them, we're going to believe, God, that you're going to touch them and strengthen them in a mighty way. I love you, Lamb of God. I thank you for what you're doing. You're such a good God. Family of God, would you stand with me and stretch your hands this way as we pray for these families? We will pray to God, touch them, that God would minister to them. God, do what needs to be done in their lives. They're bringing some stuff. They're bringing some stuff. Whatever the stuff is, that's between them and God. But we're leaving God is going to do it, and that God's going to minister to them, God's going to give them strength to endure, and that God's going to give them victory. Amen? Come on, amen? Let it be. That's what we're declaring, let it be. Would you stretch your hands this way? Would you open your mouth and pray with me and believe that God's going to touch them and minister to them? Christian's going to sing us a little song. God, you are greater, greater, smaller like our God, you alone are worthy, God, you are greater, greater, smaller.
The scripture said, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Can we just stop for just a moment before we go home or wherever we're going and just give God thanks? Come on, all across this house, come on, thank the Lord for the overcoming victory and the power that God has given unto us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the empty tomb. Thank you for victory. Thank you that you have the keys of death and of hell. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, that all sickness and powers of hell are bound at your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for always causing us to triumph. Thank you that we are more than conquerors through Christ that loved us. Thank you, Lord, that the power of sin is broken. The power of sin is broken. Hell is defeated. The devil is cast off. Every vain imagination and thought that exalts itself against Christ, we can cast it off because victory is ours. Thank you, Lord, for the victory we have in you. We praise your holy name, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Come on, one more time. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, he's worthy. 
He's worthy. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. He's worthy. He's worthy. Father, make your face shine upon them. Let your grace rest on their lives. Keep them in the way as they go. God, I pray that your blessings would rain on their lives, God, for those that have lived their lives committed to you and walk in the way that you have them to go. I pray, Lamb of God, that they walk in your truth, they walk in your light. God, I pray that you would just bless them. God, every step they take, let it be territory that they take for your kingdom. For those, God, that are wayward and not where they need to be, I pray today, God, that you would just arrest their hearts and help them to surrender their lives to you and live their lives in a way that brings glory and honor to you. For those, God, that have not trusted your promises like they should, God, I pray that you'd help them to see the overwhelming victory that we can have through the promises of your word. God, let your countenance rest on us. Keep us in your grace and your mercy. Father, for all that's done and all that's accomplished, we'll be sure to give you praise, glory, and honor. We ask these things in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, come on, shake hands, hug necks. Love on one another. God bless you. See you later. Have a blessed.